Good morning and welcome to the Daily Tanya. Today is Thursday, Tess Adar, the ninth day of Adar. The ninth day of Adar is a very special day. It is the day the Friedrich of the previous Rebbe came to America in 1940, was saved from Nazi Poland, and uh, he came here to America. And on the first day that he came, a broken person physically, but strong spiritually. And he came and he said he came to change, to bring Yiddishkeit here to America. And indeed he says, America is no different. America is nicht anders. And you can bring the Yiddishkeit. And indeed the revolution, the spiritual revolution we have today, what we see today with the Chabaras is all over. Is also thanks to this very special day that the Friedrich Rebbe came here. And uh, so today I'm giving the class from the Oihel. I'm going to soon go into the Rebbe to ask a bracha. Anyone who wants to get a bracha, please text me at ASAP, your name and your mother's name. So we'll ask a bracha for you. Uh, I don't have a Pushka Tzedaka over here, so... I'll take a dollar, put it away, and so as I walk out, I'll put it into the pushka, make sure to give tzedakah every day. So today, we're starting chapter 32. 32 in Hebrew is Lamed Beis, that spells the word lave, which means the heart, and indeed this is a chapter that is the heart of the Tanya. Now, the Rebbe talks about, in this chapter, how is it possible to love your fellow Jew like you love yourself. It's a mitzvah in the Torah. It says, "Ve'ahavta l'reyacha kamecha." Love your fellow like you love yourself. And it talks about loving everyone. You forget about loving someone like you love yourself. To to command someone to love someone else, that itself is not easy. Love everyone, people you don't like, to love them. And not only that, love them like you love yourself. That seems impossible. And indeed, some of the commentators explain that the mitzvah is not about the feelings, that you should have a feeling of love towards someone else, but it is about the action. That act towards others like you would act towards yourself. It's not easy, but it's doable. You can do it. It takes hard work to make sure don't do to others what you don't like being done to you. So some of the commentators say that this is the mitzvah. However, in, where we see from the Torah itself that talks about love, your, love someone, not only act towards the others, the, the way Rashi explains it, the way the Maimonides explains it, that it means literally to love someone else. And that's indeed what al Rebbe says here, that this is the mitzvah, to love. To love someone else like you love yourself. How? How is it possible? Here comes the al Rebbe, and he's telling us, based on what we explained in the last few chapters, we can understand how to do it. The last few chapters, we explained, al Rebbe explained that we have our godly soul and we have our animal soul. Our animal self, selfish self, and we have our godly self. And the question is, what do we identify with? What is the main thing? Our selfishness or our neshama? The neshama that is in us. And indeed, the Alta Rebbe explained that we need to focus on, on, on the, how the, the animalistic self, our selfish self, is so loathsome. It, it separates us from Hashem. And how we need to realize that what is the real self, what is the real self that we should identify is the, the, the godly soul. When you think about this, learning the last few chapters well, and practicing that we will elevate our godly soul, this leads us to great joy. Why? 
because we realize we have a very special godly soul in us that is trapped in the physical body, in the selfish body. And every time we go against and, and, and our, our, our natural tendencies and we elevate our godly soul, a godly soul that is one with Hashem, and we elevate that soul, take it out from the physical imprisonment, from the captivity of the physical body, that great causes that is a cause for great joy. The joy of knowing that we are elevating ourselves, elevating our neshama, connecting it to Hashem, and therefore, knowing having this in mind, this will help us also to approach our fellow in a different in a different way. Because when you love someone else. If, you, if you're doing it from the selfish perspective, from the animalistic soul, you, lo- you don't really love someone else. You love yourself. You love someone because that person makes you feel good. And that person looks good, is smart, and helps you. It's, good. it's all about you. It's all about the world is, is, is centered around you. And that is why it's very difficult to have love to another person. Truly, to have love to another person. But if you think about the neshama, if you think about your true self, which is the godly part of you, and whatever you do, it's about Hashem, about elevating the neshama, then you look at the other person, you see, the other person is part of me. We all have the same neshama. We are brothers, literally. Not only that, when in the root, we are really one, one with Hashem. So if you practice that this should be the, the way you should look at yourself, that is the way you're able to look at another Jew and say, me and him, that's not the same. Helping him is helping myself because it's about helping our neshama together. So let's see inside the way the Alta Rebbe says this. Chapter Lamed Beis, chapter 32. So the Alta Rebbe Vehinei. Acting on the advice mentioned above to view one's body with scorn and contempt and to find joy in the joy of the soul alone. That the selfishness of the body, this is despicable. It's all about self. But the joy is the joy of the neshama. It says, This is a direct and easy path towards fulfilling the mitzvah you shall love your fellow as yourself. Let me go to the Mount Cotton with regard to every Jew, both great and small. Great and small, talking about in spiritual stature. It's easy to, to love someone that is great and spiritually. You see all the, all the greatness about him. But a person who is very small, very low, it's not easy. But if you think about the Neshama, says the Alter Rebbe, but the source of our souls, that is the way, that is the easy path to, to get there. And the Alter Rebbe explains, Ki me'acha since his body is despised and loathsome, he will not love himself on account of his body more than he loves his fellow. As for the soul and spirit, the differences between his own soul and that of his fellow surely will not diminish the love between them. Why? For who can know their greatness and excellence in their source and root, the living God? <laughs> there is the Elohim Chaim refers to the level of where the soul, the source of the souls, where it becomes differentiated in different levels, different neshamas that is given to different people. And who is the one to say that your neshama is higher, that the neshama is lower? It could be the other way around. 
sometimes the neshama of a simple person, the person who is, seems to be a very simple, but his neshama is very high. And indeed, people who have great challenges in life, usually they come with a high soul in order to be able to overcome the challenges. So that is one step to understand. You look at another Jew, we have a soul, he is a soul. We come from, I don't know from whose soul is bigger. Then the Alter Rebbe goes to the next step and says, not only you don't know which one is bigger, but really in the truth is that they're all the same. What does it mean they're all the same? And you have to make up your mind. Is it big? Is, is it differences or is it all the same? So the explanation is that in the root, it's all the same. We call, uh, they come from the same root. Furthermore, they are actually all equal. And not only equal, the of not only that are they equal, but really they are one because we come from one father. They all have one father, one source. And within the source, they all comprise one entity. It is on the account of this common root in one God that all of Israel are called brothers. And Al Rebbe says mamash in the full sense of the word. It's not like you call someone bro, bro brother, because in the Torah sometimes brothers is referred to as relatives. But not literally. But here the Alter Rebbe says, yes, indeed, it's, we are really brothers, literally. Why? Because of the root of the soul in the one God. Only the bodies are distinct from each other. Continues the Alter Rebbe and says, and therefore, Therefore, there can be no true love and fraternity between those who regard their bodies as primary and their souls secondary. If you identify with your physical being, then yes, it's, you can't have true love to another person but only a love based on an external factor. You love someone because he's good to you. If that changes, the love will change. You cannot have true love if, that, if the body is, 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 is primary, not the soul. The only way to have true love is when you focus on the true identifying with your true self, with the neshama, with the, the neshama, the soul is the main thing. Now, the Alta Rebbe continues, to explain something very interesting. There's the story with Hillel Azaken, Hillel the elder, who uh, a non-Jew wanted to convert to Judaism. And he came to Hillel and he asked him to convert him. He told him, please convert me. On the, but with one condition, I want to stand on one foot. Teach me everything on one foot. And Hillel told him, yeah, sure. I'll teach you one thing. And he taught him this mitzvah of love your fellow Jew like you love yourself. So what you don't like, he says, this is, this mitzvah is the whole thing. Everything else is commentary. Now, what does that mean? The mitzvah of loving your fellow like you love yourself is the, is the whole thing. Everything else is commentary. What, what is it? The mitzvahs, commandments in the Torah, let's say the commandment, keep Shabbos, eat Shabbos, eat kosher. What does it have to do with love? Of your fellow Jew, I can understand there. You know there are certain mitzvahs that are govern the relationships between people. Be nice to other people. That I can understand. Say that this is the base. This is the basis of those mitzvahs. But what does it have to do with any other mitzvah? You're not in God because you love your fellow Jew. And here the Alter Rebbe says, based on what we explained, that makes sense. Because how, what does it mean to love your fellow that you love yourself? It is about focusing on your soul rather than on your body. 
Because that's the only way you can get to, to love someone else, like you love yourself. If And that really is the basis of the entire Torah. Because the entire Torah is about elevating our soul over our body. Serving Hashem, doing the mitzvahs. Elevating our soul, reaching up to the level of our soul. Not only that, now the is going to explain. But our job is to elevate our soul. Our job is also to bring down godliness into the root of our souls. What does that mean? To become one with Hashem. When you reach to, your, to, to, to connecting to the very essence of your soul, and knowing that in the essence of your soul, you are really one with Hashem. It's really one, and everything is one. Then, that brings, it says, there is the light of the encompassing light, where Hashem, when everything is one, is connected with the source of the neshamas of the Jewish people which is called the Memalek Alam and the light that fills the world. And you infuse the source of the soul with a higher light by elevating yourself. And that is every mitzvah what we do. That's why in the morning we say, L'shem yichud kutshu b'richu shechente. When you do a mitzvah, you say, for the sake of unifying kutshu b'richu, the God, and his shechina, the Holy One, Blessed Be, and his divine presence. We need to unify them. Every mitzvah does that. Some people say it before many mitzvahs. They say that this is what we have in mind. We say it once a day before the blessing of Baruch Sha'ama. And this, that our mitzvahs of this day should be for that purpose of unifying the Holy One, Blessed Be'i, and His Divine Presence. Meaning that we should draw down from the higher level of godliness into the divine presence, the divine presence that is the Shekhinah that dwells in us. That is the Torah. And this is the same idea of loving your fellow Jew, because that's the only way of you to love your fellow Jew, is when you go connect, when you deep reach deep into the source, into your, the source of your nation, when you identify with your true self. That's what al Rebbe continues now. It says, V'zehu she'om arilu lazaken al kiyam mitzvah this explains Hillel, the elder's statement concerning the fulfillment of this mitzvah. He says, this is the entire Torah. The rest is but commentary. Why? Because for the basis and the root purpose of the entire Torah is to elevate and exalt the soul high above the body to God, the source and root of all worlds, to the highest levels. And also what, what else? The, the entire Torah, the purpose of the Torah is to draw down the godliness into the Knesset Yisrael, the root of the Neshamas of the Israelites. And also to draw down the infinite light of the Ein Sof into the community of Israel, as will be explained further. Meaning, in chapter 41, Dalt Rebbe will explain this. Meaning, into the fountainhead of the souls of Israel, so that the one God will reside within Israel, but only insofar as they are one, meaning united. But this indwelling of the light of the Esau in the community of Israel is impossible if there is this unity between the souls. 
God forbid, for God does not dwell in an imperfect, fragmented place. That's why we need to unite. When you unite, is the whole body is complete. The body is a whole. When you have the body as a whole, every Jew is a whole. It's the one body, that's when just like a vessel. When a vessel is a complete vessel, you put into the vessel, then it stays. If there is a leak, if it's missing an organ, then it leaks. So you don't have the blessings there. So do we say in our prayers, bless us, our Father, all as one, with the light of your countenance. Indicating that the light of God's countenance can be revealed only when we are united all as one. As explained elsewhere at length. This is the beautiful lesson that we learned today about how to get to love your fellow like you love yourself. It's not easy. It's, yes, we know how to do it now. Now we got to work on it. It is a day-to-day work and exercise. Learning about it. Practicing it. You're getting up in the morning. Washing your hands. Saying thank you, Hashem, for giving us neshama. Give tzedakah. Do a mitzvah. Think about it. Pray. And, and work on it, ultimately, we'll get there. Have a wonderful day.